What's up guys? Welcome back to our guitar finishing series here using the guitar finishing kit by Bellin. Uh, at this point we've done all of our paint work. We've got our color on there. We've got our clear coat on there. So it's looking pretty good, nice and shiny. It's not perfect though. It's not quite a mirror finish um, because we haven't done the last couple steps. So in this video we're going to start on those and hopefully get them finished. What that's going to involve is the sanding and the polishing process. All right. So once you've got your clear coat on there, it should look pretty shiny, right? It should look pretty good. But to get that beautiful mirror finish that we all love, or most of us love, uh, what we have to do is now sand this clear coat perfectly flat, take out any imperfections, any scratches, any orange peel, and then uh, we polish it back to a high gloss. So to begin with, we're going to start with the 800 grit paper that's in there. We're going to use the wool lube to lubricate the paper and make it slide easier and, and, uh, and not jam up as much. And we're going to start with that and work our way up through the grits all the way up to the 2000 that they have in here. If you have a higher grit paper after that, you're welcome to use that as well. The kit recommends that we do our sanding with the wood grain when possible here. Now, I disagree with that. Well, I don't disagree with that. You're welcome to do that, um, but I don't think it matters because we now have this thing completely sealed, completely coated, so the wood grain isn't relevant to the surface anymore. It does give you a point of reference, and I do think that it's best when possible to do it all in one direction, so I see why they said that. Um, but if you prefer to sand this way, sideways, instead of with the grain of your guitar, that's fine as well, as far as I'm concerned. I also uh, I recommend that you use a sanding block if you can. They are cheap, they're pretty easy to get your hands on, and uh, honestly you can just make one. You can just use something flat and use that as a sanding block. That'll prevent you from putting imperfections and gouges and stuff or ridges into your surface using your fingers and whatnot. It's, it's really the best way to go about it for the flat surfaces. So I'm going to start with the 800 grit paper that they've given me here. These are all wet and dry papers. I'm going to get some of the wool lube. Now I gotta find all this stuff. We've got our polishes for after. Here we go, wool lube. And what I'm gonna do, as per the instructions, is I'm gonna dilute the wool lube. I'm gonna go grab a little container and dilute it 50% uh, with water. So I'll have half wool lube, half water. I'll use that as a lubricant for the paper, which I'm going to tear into appropriate sizes for my sanding block. So I'll go get that ready to go, and then you can watch me start sanding this. All right, guys, so I've got my wool lube here diluted 50% with water. Um, be careful when you're sanding with water, <laughs> okay? Um, water and wood are not best friends. So just don't go too crazy with it. Don't dump water all over your surface because, uh, sorry, my viewfinder's upside down there, because it could, you know, it could get into the wood and cause swelling and stuff like that. The, uh, I'll be honest with you, I used almost zero of this massive container of wool lube to do this. So I get the feeling that this is going to last me lots of projects. Even if I have to mix up like six batches of this, it's only going to be a small portion of the wood lube. So, or wool lube rather. So pretty excited about uh, just the sheer volume that they give you in this. As always, a huge thank you to Bellin for sending me this kit. I'm very, you know, very pleased with the results that it's given me so far. Um, despite my poor sanding job, that's looking, looking really good already. So the kit's, the kit's great. It comes with lots of stuff that I'll be able to use for a long time to come, way more than I need. Um, so what I'm going to do is just take some of this and apply it to my 800 grit paper here, which I have on my sanding block. You can see it's kind of almost a little bit soapy. The wool lube is uh, a pretty thick substance, but I'm just getting my paper wet. I'm not applying an insane amount of this stuff because, I, again, I don't want to get it into my wood in the unfinished areas. And it's pretty straightforward after this. You just go ahead and sand. I'm going to do this all over the guitar. Um, and go ahead and, yeah, just sand the finish flat. And the way that we know it's flat, and I'll show you guys this in a second because mine's got kind of a linear, ooh, a linear pattern to it. Um, right now because of the way that I sanded the wood. The way that we know it's flat once I clean this off. Oh, okay, we're not there yet, sorry. Let me keep, uh, 
Let me keep sanding for a minute. Basically, as you sand, the surface goes dull. Everybody understands that, I assume. And uh, when you clean this off after, you'll see that the surface should be dull. And if there are spots that are not dull, spot, uh, spots that are still glossy, the sandpaper hasn't touched those yet. So those represent low spots in your finish. And you need to keep sanding until you no longer have any low spots in your finish. And that's how you know that your finish is flat. So this can be a long process. It can take quite a while. We're starting at 800 grit, so it, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, if we were starting at a higher grit even, it would take uh, considerably longer. But you don't want to go too crazy with the 800. You want to make sure that your finish is perfectly flat and then stop because you, you do run the risk of, of sanding all the way through. So get your finish flat with this product and then move on to your 1000 grit and then your, I think, 1200 or 1500 or whatever they have in there next, all the way up to your 2000. You'll find that you won't really be able to use a sanding block on the edges, of course, so you can do those by hand or you can use a flexible sanding block. They have things like that. Uh, or even a, uh, a, a thin eraser, an eraser for pencil. Those tend to flex nicely for that kind of thing. And then for these rounded over surfaces, you can just sand them by hand. Or if you're good with a block, you can do them with a block, but I don't recommend it because, I mean, a block's flat and it'll put pressure on a specific part of it. And that's probably not the greatest idea. All right, so let's clean this off and see what we're dealing with here. Now, I've never used this wool lube before. It, it slid quite nicely. I'm happy with how it performed that way, but I don't know if you can just clean it off like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it seems, seems that way. All right, no problem. So you just wipe it off after. And you'll notice in mine, when I show you, because like I said, originally on the wood, I didn't do a very good job and I didn't sand my sealer as flat as I should have, um, that there are some, some low spots in here that are still shiny, right? You see that? And some areas that are nice and dulled out, those areas are flatter but there's still some spots in there because I haven't been doing this very long. So it does take some time, it, uh, a considerable amount of time to be honest with you, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, there's no need for you to watch me sand all day. Do bear in mind that, I mean, your paper shouldn't jam up very quickly when you're using this lubricant. That's one of the benefits of it, but it will eventually jam up. So don't be afraid to change it. I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll come back when this is nice and flat and move on to the next grit. All right guys, so this is down to 800 grit now. You can see it's, it's all kind of nicely dulled out. Don't have a bunch of shiny spots to worry about. So now it's time to move on to the next grit of paper. And really I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my, this is my, uh, original batch still. I've used very little of the diluted wool lube. So I'm going to use that again. They give you several sheets of 800 and you'll probably need them because that is the longest part of the process is getting that finish leveled out. Once you've got that done with your 800 grit, you can move on to your 1000 grit and keep going up from there. And it's the exact same process. You're just going to continue sanding, uh, you know, with the direction that you've been sanding the whole time and get this smoothed out. The purpose of moving up through these higher grits is to take out all the scratches from the lower grits. And once you're all the way up to 2000 grit, then you can start polishing. All right, guys, so now we've got this face sanded down to 2000. You can see it's almost, uh, well, it's, it's very smooth. It's almost a satin, well, it probably is a satin sheen at this point, just because of how smooth we've got that sanded down. So now it's time to start uh, start buffing it back up to a gloss. So what we're going to use first is the well, yeah, finish rub. So Bellin has supplied a massive can of this finish rub. I get the feeling that we're only going to use a small portion of it, but hey, who knows? I guess we'll, uh, we'll see as we go here. So we're going to start with this. We're going to use the cloths that they've given us. Now this is kind of uh, almost an abrasive paste 
fine rubbing agent. Anyway, it, uh, it just goes on with the cloth. And we're just gonna ball up the cloth, get a little bit of this on it, and work in kind of small areas here. So let's start, let's just start down in this area, okay? We can see how that looks now. Spread some of this on there. Now you have to start with a reasonable amount of pressure, and this can take a while too. The whole, you know, sanding and buffing process, the whole finishing part after you've got your clear coat on can be a fairly long process. But we start, yeah, by, uh, by applying some pressure to this, wipe off the excess. And then we can go in again and do the same. And this, this can take a few tries. <laughs> And once we're done with this stuff, we'll be moving on to another product. But let's see how this, how this leaves this area. So you do a, you know, you go in with high pressure and then according to the instructions, once you've done that, you go in again and just kind of do it gently. A light pressure. Now I've never used this product before. So honestly, there, there may be a better way. I'm not sure I'm applying quite the right amount. I'm not sure that it matters. I'm guessing it doesn't matter how much you apply. So let's pull off the excess, buff it off of there, and kind of see what we're dealing with. Keep, keeping in mind that this is not the final step, um, there's still the buffer's polish after this. All right, so now with that kind of buffed off of there, you saw how it was before, it was kind of like this and now we see it's starting to get glossier a little more reflective there's still some uh, some residue on there that I haven't pulled off yet but it is definitely starting to gain a little bit more shine in that area you can see that I left some of it on there I need to get rid of that so I'm gonna go ahead and do this step for the entire surface and then we'll come back uh, and move on to the buffers polish so I don't think you need to watch me continue to struggle with this. It's probably going to take me a while. I'm kind of weak, but uh, we'll get this done and then I'll show you what it looks like after this step. All right, guys. So not surprisingly, after our finish rub, which was a coarse compound, it, it had a pretty significant amount of grit to it. We're left with a very, very smooth finish. It's been rubbed out kind of like a pumicey type of thing, but it's, it's, you know, it's in the, uh, I'd say the semi-gloss range at this point. It, well, it's glossy, but it's not perfect. Okay, we got some swirl marks in there. If this were a black finish, you'd definitely be able to see those. But of course, that's not our last step. Now we have our buffers polish. So this is what we use to really take that up to a full gloss, at least I hope it is, um, and to get out those swirl marks. And this is done with the same technique. Take smaller areas at a time, buff them out in a circle, and then linearly, Start with lots of pressure, move to lower pressure. Make sure you shake this stuff up before you use it. I'm not even sure that I shook it up enough, but uh, there's gotta be some, some substance to it. So this is a fairly thin looking polish from what I can tell so far. Again, I'm not entirely sure that I shook it up enough, so that might have something to do with it. Oh, but I can already see it working. Um, I need to see if I can get you guys a better camera angle. Hang on here. All right, we're back. So over here, we've got kind of what we were working with before. And then you see that right, right in this area? That's the area that I've started polishing. Um, so let's, yeah, that, that only took a couple seconds. You actually saw all of it there. So let's get to work again here. Table's moving a little bit. <laughs> I need a more sturdy workbench, something that's not so portable. All right, my God. You can already, yeah, you can tell. It actually, uh, that gloss comes up a lot quicker than they led me to believe there. Granted, it's not 
perfect yet, but it is pretty close. Yeah, that's looking, it's looking real nice in that area. Just needs to be cleaned, I think. So that's the process. Um, Got to go over it a couple times. I still haven't gone over it lightly. That might actually accomplish some of that cleaning that I was referring to because there's a little bit of haze on there. Buff it off with a clean part of the cloth. Yeah, this is working beautifully. So that's really all there is to it with this stuff. You just uh, go through, pick an area, rub it out, and then move on to the next area. And you can see that it delivers pretty fantastic results. So all of this stuff that's not quite a gloss yet, I don't think it'll take me as long as they told me it would to get it up to a full gloss. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep working away here and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So guys, I got my hopes up on that one and uh, <laughs> it delivered. For lack of a better term, I think this is awesome. Look at that. That is exactly what I was hoping for. Beautiful mirror finish. That yeah, that polish performed beautifully. I'm, I'm very happy with that. I was a little worried, uh, I'm not going to lie, when I was done the, uh, the initial finish rub because the, uh, the rubbing compounds that I typically use with my gun, my polishing gun, uh, tend to leave a slightly smoother look than that and the polish is just kind of a finish off. I think maybe I didn't do enough with that initial product. But I mean, obviously I, I kind of did enough because it, it looks great. So let's, yeah, this is exactly, this is great. I'm, I'm really happy with this. This is a, a spray can finish using Bellin's kit. I'm kind of baffled by that. And usually I think spray cans, it's, it's pretty tough to get a nice finish, but this stuff worked awesome. There's only one other step and it's optional. Uh, if you want, oh, I'm getting it dirty now. If you want to put some wax on there, there's an option for that. They do provide you with this deluxing compound. All right, and this is, yeah, basically just a wax that you can add on. Um, now, again, it's entirely optional and I'm super happy with this. So generally I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it, but hey, the whole purpose of this is to demo the kit, right? And yeah. I might as well. So I'm gonna apply this using the same technique. <laughs> Hesitantly, I, I must say. Um, so this is kind of a gummy substance and you do the same thing, you buff it on. And I mean, you've got your clear coat, it's all polished out. It's protection for the, the color and everything, but adding a little bit of wax isn't a terrible idea. I generally don't do it, but it's, you know, it's there to, to protect your clear coat if you want. It certainly wouldn't hurt anything. The thing is, I never find that the wax leaves as nice a finish as just the clear coat by itself. So if I put the wax on here, and I'm only gonna do it on part of it so you can kind of see it. I think I probably need to let it sit for a little bit, but I'll just buff it off right away here and you can kind of see. It, it gives a nice protective layer. It's still lacquer, so it's not the most durable paint out there. It's not polyurethane, right? If you smash it against something, it's probably gonna suffer. But uh, yeah, throw a coat of wax on, on part of it and show you what it looks like here. I won't do the whole thing because I'll be out of breath for the end of my video. So this area now is waxed and you can kind of tell by the way the light reflects off of it. I didn't really take the time to polish out the wax. 
But if I had, I'm sure it would look pretty much the same as the beautiful white gloss that I've got everywhere else here. So you're supposed to apply that the same way. So you do a couple passes the way that I just did, uh, kind of aggressively, and then you go over it again, lightly, buff all of it off, and that's it. So that's the end of the series. Uh, guys, this is the finish that you can expect if you use Bellin's kit and you do it properly, follow their instructions, you can get this. So again, as I said in a prior video, or at least once, uh, the kit's designed to use on acoustic guitars. When I went through and did my sanding on this, I took almost all of that clear off of there. So it's, you're left with a fairly thin layer when all's said and done. So you don't, it's the right material. It's, an, it's a lacquer, right? It's the right material to be using on an acoustic so that you don't have to worry about affecting how it sounds or, or wrecking it or anything like that. And you've got the, those two uh, toners, so you can do a variety of burst effects and stuff like that with those. You can paint the edges and leave the top natural, whatever you want to do. As usual, I'm going to post a link to uh, Mohawk and Bellin's stuff, the same company. I'm going to post a link to that in my description. I'm going to post a link to where you can find this kit on Amazon. Um, please check their stuff out and let me know if you're, if you're in Canada, you can still get this. It's just a little more complicated. So let me know if you're, uh, if you're in Canada and you're looking for one. And as always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. If you haven't checked out the prior videos, uh, please do so. Then that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions. See you next time.